Hello. Um, my name is Thomas O'Connell, and I'm looking for £200,000. Um, I'm going to tell you about a very exciting entrepreneurial company called Atomic Sports, which is my company. Um, I'm going to tell you about the core product of the company, which is um, the KMX cart. Um, um, the company, uh, a year and a half ago, um, I had a, I was out with a friend. Thomas is already having difficulty explaining his idea to the dragons. A year and a half ago, I was in a, fr in a, in a parent's house who bought um, a KMX from me, and um, the parent said to me, you know, the kid, the kid doesn't stop playing on this product. And um, I had just a kind of a eureka moment where I said to myself, the only way to get kids outdoors and active again is actually to promote new, innovative, active toys. So the idea of the company is to create a brand for new, innovative, active toys. So when people are thinking, what is the, the new cool toy in the market this year? They're going to think, what's the atomic toy? This is our core product, the KMX cart. And the idea of the KMX is actually um, carts motocross. So if you, if you think of BMX, BMX stands for bikes motocross. Go-karts have been around for a long time. So the idea of the KMX is carts motocross. And I'm just going to show you a quick video. Of that. Uh, um, it, it has all the relevant safety standards and BS approved. This year, we're looking to kind of break into the UK. And, but basically, that's what I'm looking for the money for. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you. Thomas wants £200,000 for his toy company and plans to use it to launch an off-road cart in the UK. But after his unimpressive pitch, can he win the Dragon's confidence? What's your nearest competition to that? What are you competing with if, if it's on the market? Uh, go karts and bicycles. That's it. And they're, you know, they've been out for a long time. And there's, you know, I've seen something very similar to that. There, there is another product. I, I, I asked you. Yeah. yeah. Go on. Then. Okay. There's a product called a Triker, right? It's got a wheel on the front, one wheel on the front, two wheels in the back, and all you do is you lean to steer. They sold 100 of them in Ireland last year, right. and I sold 2,000 of these. I mean, what's happening now in Ireland is incredible. One guy last year, I, I supplied him with posters, and the kids were coming in. They were robbing the posters out of the shop and taking them home and putting them up in their room. How safe is that? It has all the, it has all the relevant safety standards. Um, it's more safer than a bicycle. If you, it's lower to the ground. If you fall off a bike, you've got a long way to go. Has it got a seatbelt on it? No. Have you got product liability insurance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as the manufacturer... How much did that cost you? It cost two grand a month. With answers to all the Dragon's questions, Thomas seems to have recovered his nerve. He's already sold 2,000 of his KMX carts in Ireland, so if it gets the same reaction in the UK, the business could prove very lucrative. But the Dragons need more convincing. Where do you, who makes it? It's, it's made by a company called KMX Carts Limited. I'm the distri distributor for them. Right, so basically, you're a master dealer? Importer. Importer and distributor. Importer and distributor. Yeah. That's your role in it? Yeah. Yeah. What proportion of your turnover comes out of KMX, or is that the only thing you do? Well, at the moment, I can't afford to do anything else. I can't afford to buy the, the stock. Um, there are other products out there that I've looked at and do believe in as well. Just tell me what happens when it goes out of fashion. Got a new, we've got to find new products. Quick? Yeah. Otherwise, liquidation? We do, or they do. You do? No, but well, like, I like, this is the risk, I suppose. I don't think it's going to go out. Like, but BMX is sold like mad when they yeah. first came out. Yeah. Then they completely went... Ha what'll happen is it'll have a peak, and then it'll um, level out, and every year there'll be sustained sales, but it'll be nothing like it was for the, maybe the first three, four years. Tom. Hi. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Your next, your sort of long-term value is going to depend on other products that either don't exist or do exist, but we don't yet really know what, what they value they have. Yeah. And so what's the next product going to be? The adult version of the KMX. After that? Um, I've got, well, there's a fantastic product at the moment that I'm, I'm looking at um, for getting Ireland. It's, a, it's an extreme pogo stick that jumps five feet in the air, and it's absolutely crazy. The kids love it. With products like the pogo stick on the horizon, Thomas seems confident that he can find the next big thing. But if he fails to do so, the success of his company could be short-lived. 
Tom, but I think you actually have the potential to have a really interesting distributorship. I think you've got a nice clear vision for it. You could build a niche brand, but the risk for me is that you're not going to get another product. It won't be a long-term success, and so for that reason, I'm out. Okay. Sorry, it isn't one for me either, so I'm out as well. To invest in Thomas's business at this early stage is risky, and Rachel Elnor and Doug Richard are out. Luckily for Thomas, another dragon sees things differently. Can I just say, I think you've really hit on something that's fantastic. You know, I'm a father of six, and getting kids outside, away from the computers and televisions, yeah. is something that drives me insane. Right. I think it could be a, a, a goer, yeah. but I've got one very serious question for you. Yeah. Right. Do you have the sole rights to import those? In the UK and Ireland. Yeah. In the UK and Ireland. Yeah. You've got sole rights. Yeah. You can guarantee that. You can show me a letter giving you sole rights. No one else can import those in, no. in Ireland or UK. No. No. Right. You're asking two hundred thousand pounds for fifteen percent of the company. How negotiable is the fifteen percent? It's not that negotiable. I'm almost going to say I'm not interested. I'm very close to it. And it's only, the only, your biggest problem is, is the percentage. Yeah, but um, let, me, let me explain, right? It's got, okay, 2,000 units sold in Ireland, right? The size of the UK market is 10 times the size of Ireland, at least. If I sell 10 times, you know, just in one year, or, you know, if I only sell 20,000 units, it's going to make Tom, close Tom, to 2 million euros. Stop trying to justify it. You've got a bloke that's nearly about to invest. You've got a bloke here that's interested. If you can uh, capture our imagination with your percentages, you might get people here who will invest. But this isn't a startup company. I can't, like, that's not, it's not really fair to go, a, a, you know, I've made a profit already. On a, on a lifespan of a product that might be dead tomorrow, so we're relying purely on you finding a replacement product. That product could be dead and buried, our money gone down the spout, and we are relying totally on you finding a new product. <laughs> that, my old son, is a startup. Thomas's unwillingness to negotiate has angered Theo Pafitis and Duncan Bannatyne, who both want to do a deal. While Thomas is insisting that his business isn't high risk, Theo Pafitis wants to prove him wrong. Listen, you've got one product and we've got you. Do you know what your debtors and creditors are? Yeah, my debtors are around 70,000 euro. Um, so you've got 70,000 debtors, euros, and creditors? Um, it's, it's about 160, 170,000, 160,000. But that's covered by stock. It's the stock. That's what that's for. Right. Do you owe the VAT man any money? Probably. Talk to me about it. I haven't, I haven't done... I probably do, yeah. If I've, I've lodged two or three hundred thousand over the, since January, I probably owe him money. But as well as that, it's probably balanced now because I'm bringing, you know, I... I it's probably balancing out. I don't know. I, I don't know. So how much do you reckon you might owe them? Um, maybe, maybe 40,000 euro. I, it can't be. I actually I can't. I don't. The fact, the, um, it's, what is it? Yeah, maybe 40,000 euro. Yeah. Maybe 40,000 euro. I'm not, I, the reason I'm not doing that is because of cash flow. You know, I need to, when I, when I get, make it. <laughs> I'm sure you've been in the same. Have you started up your own company? Before yes, sure many times. Many times. No, I always pay the VAT man. I always pay the VAT man. If I pay the VAT man now, right, I don't, I'm not able to. The stock that comes in next, that'll hit my overdraft, and I have no overdraft to hit my stock. But he'll put you in prison, so you won't have a business anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so it's irrelevant. Thomas was edging towards a deal, but his casual approach to his VAT payments has appalled the Dragons and ruined his credibility in their eyes. Peter Jones has made his decision. I, I do not see this at all. Right. Um, I think that you as an individual presented very poorly. I'm absolutely staggered yet again that somebody has come here to pitch for £200,000 and dress as if they're going to go and sit in a bar and have a pint. I just don't think that you've taken it seriously enough. You have no idea where you are with your business. You're talking about a VAT man and you laugh it off. I don't really know. I mean, how pathetic is that? 
Yeah, I'm going to put Michael, money my... into your business, £200,000, and I'm going to ask you for where's the company, what are we doing, how are we doing? And I'm... you're going to go, I don't know, Peter. I'm one guy. What kind of relationship could that be between us? I don't think you're professional. I, I'm not buying into the concept. I think that's a fad. And I am not investing in you. Okay. I'm out. Right. Thomas's VAT slip-up was the last straw for Peter Jones, who's declared himself out. Duncan Bannatyne and Theo Pafitis were keen to make an investment, but has Thomas ruined his chances with them as well? I was very, very interested in, in this product, and you, until you laughed about the VAT man, because he's, he's, he's the hardest guy to come along and get your money. You can just walk in and just take everything. Yeah. They boom straight in the door, you're gone, finished. Yeah. He's, well, the one guy you, he's the one guy you've got to pay for. When he sees you laughing, you're finished. And so, for that reason, I'm out. In light of Thomas's revelation, Duncan Bannatyne has performed a complete U-turn and backed away from any kind of deal. The last dragon, Theo Pafitis, has also heard enough. I was looking at making an offer of a figure. I'm not even going to make that offer now. Okay. Tom, reluctantly, very reluctantly, because I love the product, and I actually believe you've got something going for you, but I'm not going to get involved. No problem. I'm out. Yeah. It's all over for Thomas. Theo Pafitis and Duncan Bannatyne loved the product, but Thomas's laid-back attitude to the VAT man destroyed any chance for a deal. The two people you should always pay. It's your doctor and the Batman. When someone thinks that's OK, I have a serious it's cultural a problem. It's business liability. So, Thomas, seriously investable or seriously uninvestable? Yeah, I just think it was down to, like, the, the VAT thing, like, um... You got it, I think. I mean, you were in a bit of a confusion, weren't you, or not? Or did you feel you, you knew exactly what you were saying there? Yeah, he was, he, he, I felt a bit insulted about the way he, he was going on about, um, you know, how I wasn't paying the VAT and stuff like that. I think, you know, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm taking risks. And then, as for the product itself, there was a question mark, wasn't there, over whether it's just a fashion, whether it's going to fly and, the, and then flop? I think any kind of, anybody with an entrepreneurial eye would see that the product's going to take off.